Hello and welcome back to chapter 4 of the Red Trap written by Selma Lagerlof. Today I'm going to explain you page number 36. So here we go. He asked permission to stay and the master blacksmith nodded the haughty consent without honoring him with a single word. So the vagabond red trap seller had entered the forge unnoticed without coming into the notice of anyone since there was a lot of sound a lot of noise there and that prevented them from getting any kind of uh, any kind of sound getting as he entered as he opened the gate and entered the forge uh, but he was noticed only when he reads very close to the furnace and then uh, reaching there he asks for permission to be granted to stay there to spend night there for the warmth to get the warmth uh, near the furnace so he was granted the permission by the by the master by the master blacksmith uh, but he did not feel it at all important to spare a word, to use a word, just he gesticulated, just he beckoned him, uh, just he waved his hand and signed that, yes, you can stay here. Um, so, and that way he was allowed to stay there. The tram did not say anything, either. He had not come there to talk but only to warm himself and sleep. Even the tram, that is the vagabond red trap seller, I didn't feel it necessary to spare a word because he had gone there to spend the night only and not to establish any kind of friendship with the staff there. So even he did not spare a word, he did not use a word to express his gratitude, his thankfulness to the staff there. In those days, the Ramso Iron Mill was owned by a very prominent iron master whose greatest ambition was to ship out good iron to the market so talking about that time uh, when he went there the red trap seller uh, went there for shelter for the night or the iron works the ramso iron work at that time was doing good business it was doing brisk business uh, it was in the he days of its business and it was owned by a reputed man, reputed iron master, whose ambition, his greatest ambition was to produce best quality iron and supply best quality material or iron um, to the market. He watched both night and day to see that the work was done as well as possible and at this very moment he came into the forge on one of his nightly rounds of inspection since he was having ambition he was ambitious he was ambitious he was reputed and he didn't want that his reputation uh, would go or his reputation was marred by damaged by the bad quality product so he took very keen interest in the affairs of the mill and and was very regular with his inspection was very regular with his visit to the mill so daily he would make two rounds of inspection so today also he was there for the same task for the same work for the inspection and it was night so he was on a night round of inspection naturally the first thing he saw was the tall ragamuffin who had eased his way so close to the furnace that steam rose from his wet rags naturally as he was uh, in his rounds of inspection so 
the first thing he noticed there was a man was a ragamuffin was a man in rags and tattered torn clothes and uh, who had who had gone uh, very close to the furnace who had been lying very close to the furnace so close that uh, that it it uh, caused his wet clothes it caused his wet clothes to 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 release to emit the steam that is it caused steam to go up from his clothes Yes, um, then blacksmith and example the army master did not follow the example of the blacksmiths who had hardly deigned to look at the stranger so here he was very careful the iron master was very careful the blacksmith didn't feel it necessary to uh, to go close to him to inquire about him but he was very careful and he went very close to a uh, very close to the uh, to the red trap seller to inspect to know to look at him closely to know more about him as he was as his body was releasing steam or his clothes were releasing steam because uh, he had got himself wet in the rain outside so he walked close up to him looked him over very carefully then tore off his slouch hat to get a better view of his face now he walked up to him he went close to him looked him over very carefully and looked him over very carefully that is checked examined him very carefully and removed his hat slouch hat and he removed the slouch hat to get a better view of his face so that he could he could see his face and find out who that man could be but of course it is you Niels Olaf he said how you do look but then as he looked at his face removing his hat he was surprised he was surprised and said oh of course it is you he exclaimed oh of course it's you Niels Olaf that is uh, someone he knew very closely his name was Nils Olof. Uh, he said, how you do look? And then said, well, how do you look? You look very different, very strange. The man with the red traps had never before seen the Iron Master at Ramso and did not even know what his name was. He was surprised. He the ragamuffin, that is the vagabond red trap seller, was surprised, was puzzled, because he had never before met the Iron Master, and even he did not know what his name was. Even he didn't know his name, and and the Iron Master exclaimed, he was shouting, "That you are, Nils Olof, or uh, some acquaintance." So uh, he was puzzled. But it occurred to him that if the fine gentleman thought he was an old acquaintance, he might perhaps throw him a couple of kroner. Therefore, he did not want to undeceive him all at once. So, he realized instantly that, well, uh, this is a good opportunity that if he hide his identity real identity so in that case possibly the rich gentleman he looked a gentleman and the rich gentleman would throw him would give him some 
Kroner some money taking pity at him. And that's why he decided to hide his identity and and behave the way he wanted him to. That is, or the way he thought, or the Iron Master thought he was. Yes, God knows things have gone downhill with me, he said. He said, yes, God knows that things have gone downhill. Things have, have become very worse for me. Have gone downhill means uh, things have become worse. Um, that is uh, very bad. And it had unexpectedly gone bad for me. Uh, he said, the, that is the retraf seller said this. You should not have resigned from the regiment, said the Iron Master. That is now he is clear that he believed him to be his comrade, his friend, uh, his friend in the army. So you shouldn't have resigned, should not have resigned uh, from the regiment, said the Iron Master. So Iron Master said that you should not have resigned from the army, from the regiment. Oh, that was the mistake, and that was a big mistake you made. If only I had still been in the service at the time, I never would have happened. It never would have happened. So he said that, well, if only I was there at that time. I wasn't there. Possibly he was posted at some other place. So he said that if I was there at that time in the service, I would not have allowed you to resign or oh, possibly that he took a uh, retirement voluntary retirement possibly because he says that uh, if I had still been in the service that means he was out of service at that time possibly not sure about it so he says that I would not allow it to happen I would not have allowed it to happen well now of course you will come home with me and now now you're going to come home with me to go along up to the manor house and be received by the owner like an old regimental comrade that however did not please the tram but the thought that he had to go to the Iron Master's um, house, manor house, that is, uh, that is the Grange, big farmhouse with land. So uh, he thought that that was not a good idea, not a good idea at all that he, that he went with him, stayed there, and that he was received as a, as, as a, as an old comrade in regimental in the regiment uh, so that idea that this very idea did not please him did not uh, make him happy so this is all for now thank you